Okay, we're recording. Okay, this is uh, Durwood King with Samson Community College. The class is ELC 117, Motors and Controls, and we're, and we're starting uh, our first day on uh, January 11, 2021. And uh, we're, we're doing a recording here um, for anyone that uh, happens to be quarantined or can't make it for some reason. Um, it's being recorded and the link will be in uh, Moodle after a while. So if you didn't get in now, you can click the link I put in later and still watch the class. And um, I can catch you present because I'll, I'll see who, who clicks the link to see the recording later. So if you happen to miss, don't, don't miss just to be, just because you can do that. But if you do miss, and when I'm recording, because I'll do it as long as it's necessary. If I know there's a need to do it, I'll do it. And then if you, even if you, if you're not into Zoom as it goes on and you watch the recording, I go back and see the, the logs and I know who's watched the recording and I'll count them present anyway. So, but, but again, try to be here so you can get your hands on. Um, okay, so um, let me shoot the, Okay. Okay, Nathan. So I've got I've got the webcam up here at the board, so you can see me. You see the board, the smart board, now. Yeah. Okay. Good. Nice and clear. Oh yeah, clear. Great, great. So this is what I do. This is uh, this is how we do it. And uh, so it's almost like being here. Um. So you get to this, let me, let me back out and show you how you get into the, did, did you see in modal, have you been in, well, of course you've been in modal. But in the same little section where you saw the link to get into here, there's the syllabus itself, and then there's the acknowledgement quiz. When we get to discussing this, you can go ahead and do the acknowledgement quiz. It ain't but one question. Go ahead and knock it out, because if you go too many days and don't do it, it it'll actually bump you out of the class. And we don't want that. Okay. It's only one question. All you're going to do is click and say, I have read it and I, and I agree to the policies and that's it. Okay. So anyway, the name of the class is Motors and Controls. And um, my name is Derwood King. For those of you that are new in here, well, and I appreciate you taking the class. You'll learn a lot. So get ready. Try to be here every class period and absorb it all. And this is something that what you learn in here is something that is Without a doubt, it's the, it's the weakest link in every maintenance group. I don't care what plant you go into, an industrial plant or even on the farm, in maintenance groups. Every maintenance group, if you go to ask the maintenance manager, what would be the weakest, the weakest skill thing in their group? And they're going to tell you electrical controls. That's the weakest thing. I don't care where you go. There's a lot of guys that are good mechanics. Naturally, they can see and do, but on the control end of it, it's not simply see it, do you got to understand what you're doing and why, and you got to understand a lot of theory behind electrical things, and, and it's a lot more thinking involved. It's not there's a see and do aspect to it, but there's a lot more to it than that. And um, and you'll do you'll do good. Everybody in here is going to do really good at it. Um, as long as you put you put yourself 100 percent in, so you're going to do great. And it's a, it's a good skill to have between this and the PLC classes and the electrical maintenance, all that together will get you a skill set that's worth a lot of money. And it's, you, you, you'll always have work as long as you're, if you're willing to work you know, and drive to where the work is, you'll always have work, you know, when you, when you learn more electrical. And um, my office hours, if you needed, if you needed help one-on-one, -on -one, I have office hours on Tuesday, Thursday from 10 a.m. to 1130. That's my direct dial number, the 900, and that is a 900 number, 910-900. Everything on campus for offices is 900 and something else. It's a, it's a prefix for on campus. That's a direct office. But um, if, if you don't get an answer, straight, a straight answer from me right then, go ahead and, and you, can, you can text me on my cell number or call, and I'll pick it up. doesn't matter what time of day or night or weekend, I'll, I'll answer 
So you don't hesitate to call me if you've got a question. If it's a small question or a big question, just go ahead and, and, I, and I'm, I'm open to it. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, that's my email if you, if you needed to, if you want to email anything. Um, you get four credit hours. Now this time, the contact hours have been reduced some. It was eight contact hours, but they have reduced it to six. And then you have an online portion that you got assignments that have to be done in Moodle. So all your worksheets are going to be done in Moodle and I'll cover, I'll lecture the chapters, but you got to do the work in Moodle on your own time. Uh, if you can, now you can squeeze some of it in, say when we're doing, when we start doing the labs out here doing your wiring. Yes, sir. Can I stand up a little bit? I don't want to be in the little. Can I just stand up? Can you stand up? You fall asleep? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and stand up. And if you want to come up here to this desk here and stand up and lean on this desk to stay awake, just go ahead and bring your stuff up here, man. Yep. Yep. I used to have that trouble working third shift right at the plant. <laughs> We had we had machines that would uh, that would the operator call you to it and say this machine's jamming up. You go over there and it ain't jamming up. You're not right in. And I go lean over on it and I wait and I wait and I wait and I wait. And then somebody goes over. Bam, man, you sleep? No, I ain't sleeping. You know. <laughs> anyway, so do you work anywhere now or uh, no, sir? Not at the moment. Right. Okay. You just need to get your hands busy. Yeah. So we're gonna do that. <laughs> okay. So anyhow, the contact hours, it used to be eight, but that two hours again is going to be, you're going to have a, a, a fair amount of stuff you got to do online as far as assignments. So when when we do start the labs up in, in, in a couple of days, we, we'll start labs up later this week. When we do, and you get something wired up ready for me to check while you're waiting, would be a time, a good time to use your time and go ahead and get in Moodle and try to knock out something in there instead of doing it when you get home. If you can knock it out here, good. So look for them opportunities to do it while you're here. And um, then you won't have so much to do, you know, when you get out of here. So it'll be approximately two hours of lecture a week and about four hours of hands-on approximately, give or take. And again, those other hours are gonna be in Moodle on your own time. Um, this is the COVID-19 information right here. So this is a big right here. Um, In a nutshell, it's just saying that I'm, I'm going to accommodate like I'm doing right now. I'm going to accommodate to the best I can. And as long as you're in Zoom or you, or you, see, or you see the recording, you'll be counted here. I'll make, I, I'm putting materials online. I'm, I'm making every effort that's possible to make sure you can do it remote if you have to until you can get back. Um, so this ain't, this is ain't my first rodeo. I've done this all last year. So I know what to do, and I can do it, and I will do it. I'll make sure that, that, that you get what you need. I want you to succeed in this thing. And we're, we're gonna have a win-win. If you're in all the way, I'm in all the way, okay? And we'll, we'll get you through it. Um, they do want you to self-report. If you do get it, let me know quickly and you go on the, the email that you received from the school. You go in there and there's gonna be a link that says you click here to do a self-reporting form. So you click it. And the form pops up and you complete it. And then there's a COVID team here and faculty that, that monitors everything and they're going to communicate with you and make sure that you don't come back until they say you can come back. There's another form you do before you can come back. So uh, make sure that you see the email and, it, 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 and you read all that. Some things can't be done remotely like the hands-on, and but we'll make it up like, you know, uh, so don't stress if, if you're if you're held in quarantine even a couple of weeks, when you get back, I guarantee you I'll find a way to get, get you called up on your, on your labs. I ain't never seen a case where I couldn't get somebody called up. You know what I mean? We'll find a way to do it. We'll find a way to do it. This is the COVID response team right here on the campus. And uh, Blair Hare is, is, is the head of it. She's actually vice president of the college now. And she's in charge of the COVID team. That's a direct number. That's a direct number. You can put it in your phone 
and you can call that number direct and, and leave a message if you know that, that would be a good thing to do that as well to go ahead and put that in your contacts okay so the, the content of the course your uh, would be fundamental concepts of motors and motor controls it includes ladder diagrams pilot devices contactors motor starters variable frequency drives called vfds motors and other control devices when you finish the class you should be able to select connect and troubleshoot motors and control circuits your out your learning outcomes would be uh, to demonstrate safe practices and procedures with tools materials and industry accepted test equipment covered in the class demonstrate appropriate use of test equipment evaluate circuit performance and apply appropriate troubleshooting techniques to control circuits interpret and use ladder and wiring diagrams symbols and schematics you're going to get really good at reading schematics you're going to know your symbols inside and out you'll learn the u.s symbols and nema and the international the iec symbols so you can look at a schematic whether the machine was built in the u.s or built in italy or germany when you get through here you'll be able to read whatever schematic um, honestly there's enough information in this class that when you get done no doubt you can go in and take this information and read uh you can go to smithfield packing or butterball or anywhere you want to or farm for that matter and pull out a schematic and you should be able to read it and i don't care where it comes from in the world because the two sets of symbols that see this in this book the the, the u.s and the international covers the whole world on control circuits so you'll be covered i've never seen a schematic i couldn't read i've been in this thing for 36 years i've been doing it since 84 i got into it in 84 and um i've never seen a a, a diagram i couldn't read seriously that come from wherever different countries of machinery is imported to these plants i haven't seen the diagram yet i couldn't read it couldn't help somebody figure out ever and, and and again that information is in this book and it doesn't take you very long to even get to that point to see all that um, and you'll absorb it you'll be surprised how well you absorb it you, you will it, it's going to be not, these schematic symbols and schematic diagrams are going to become your 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 extra language you might be bilingual you might you know you may know english and spanish well you're going to get ready to learn this is going to be your third language which would be electrical schematics and control circuits um, again, it is a language, and you'll learn it, and you're going to get fluent at it, very fluent. <laughs> I guarantee it. Just be here and, and put yourself in it. You're going to get good at it. Um, demonstrate and describe the use of pilot devices. Pilot devices are things that control things like push buttons, switches, sensors. Those are the things that run things. Uh, thermostats here. Temperature controls, that's a pilot device that runs the motor control. So anything that runs, that tells the control to come on, that's a pilot device. Like a pilot on the airplane. So, you know, push buttons, thermostats, all that stuff is pilot devices. Um, you're going to learn about relays, contactors, motor starters, variable frequency drives and that are in control circuits. And you'll describe principles and operations related to control circuits and describe concepts of rotating electrical machinery. And the book is right here. And let's, let's find out how many people um, find it, who, who has the book, who does it. It's understanding motor controls. Understanding motor controls, the fourth edition by Stephen L. Herman. So, how many, is there anyone? How many people do have the book? Now, so in the bookstore, as of this morning, I went over there. There were seven more books over there. There were seven more copies in. So there's there should be plenty in there for y'all. And the cost of the book is $188.50. Now you might say, well, that's crazy. You know, that book might not, let me tell you, this book will pay for itself. The first time you get a paycheck, it's paid for. 
and you're gonna make a lot of money if you get in the field if, if you if you like this and you decide to stay in it you're gonna make a pile of money it's gonna make a lot of money for a lot of years for the rest of your life if you stay in it you won't have trouble i don't think you'll ever have trouble finding a job unless something really goes out of whack with the economy so this book is worth a lot more than 188 dollars a lot more it's the best electrical book i've ever seen in my life the best it really is and we can't even cover the whole book this semester it's there's room in here to, to do a level two barney's already talking about me setting up a level two motor control and so when that happens the same book could be used to pick it up and just go right on into level two but there's enough in this book to go two semesters there is there's the essentially so hang on to it don't sell it i would not sell it uh, so 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 the folks that don't have the book raise your hand now, do you do you plan to buy the book on campus? Do we go get it right now? You can. You can. You you might want to hang well, uh you're probably gonna miss wait till we do let's see. You're best off to just stay and, and then when the class ends, go get it then. Mm -hmm. no, nobody out there is gonna get it. I mean they're, you know, you, you're looking at, at the people that would be getting it anyway, and there's seven of them. There's seven more books in there. So some of y'all probably bought it online, didn't you? Nobody, everybody bought them here on campus. Well, that's good. I, so they did. They did get it in, uh, enough books there. That's good. I'm surprised they didn't give it to you. I told you my classes. I'm surprised they didn't give it to you. So you told them to go in the bookstore. Yeah. You show your schedule. Yeah, she didn't give it to you. Okay. But when we get done, just shoot on over there, Dan, and, and they'll they'll have it for you. They, they there's plenty of them over there. So who who else that does everybody plan to buy here on campus? Everybody does. Okay, good. So so you should be you should you, you should be covered. Um, you As far as your own supplies go, normal paper, pencil, pad, you know, calculator. Safety glasses is, is a must. You have to have safety glasses when you're doing anything at all in that shop. So safety, uh, and again, if you have prescription glasses, like I do, you can go to Lowe's and buy these extra big ones. It's called over the glass. Over the glass, safety glasses, and they, they, they're extra big, and they'll fit over the top of your prescriptions. They won't mess them up like that and you know so that's that's what i use the bookstore has regular ones if you don't you know if you don't need these big ones the bookstore's got them make sure that you get safety glasses i don't provide them now, you, you may find some laying around out there but you may one day and you may not another day it's, it's just i can't guarantee they'll be laying around but but you have to have them on um your uh you know your, your safety rules would be you know you follow safety rules inform me if you see somebody doing something unsafe um don't use any equipment unless you have permission to do it just an example would be when you're doing your control wiring over here you're right next door to the engine lathes that sometimes it's tempting to reach over and start fiddling with the lathe over there but it's better not to do that because I'm not, I can't be responsible if you, if you get hurt on the way, you know. I don't teach it. I'm not certified to teach that. So best off, just stick with what we're doing and wait till Dale or, or Alan Strickland or somebody's teaching that stuff and then you could, you know, do it whenever you're, whenever you're with them. Um, report any accidents to me, even if it's a cut we've got, I've got on, stuff to put on there and I got band-aids we can get you that if you need it just re report anything that goes on um, when, you're, when you're in class in shop and in general you know there's 10 points off for, for late assignment so I'll give you I'll give you a due date and then um, 10 points off each day after that does anybody have any particular disabilities that they need accommodated in here There's a lady that you talk to to if you if you did. The college does want you to communicate with me through email. Um, for anything, 
major like doctor things and all that, if you're seeking to be out an extended period or something like that, communicate through the email. You have to be here for 85% for of the classes to pass, which means you know you, can, you can't miss any more than 15% is what it boils down to. Now, if you've got a special situation with sickness or work, I, we always work with that. We always work with that. So. The only person I've ever, the only people I've ever dropped were people that, that flat out quit coming and they didn't tell me that they were going to quit and they wouldn't answer no phone calls or nothing. They just, just disappeared. And I had to drop them. Too. So they didn't get a failing grade. I just did a drop and it didn't mess up on the transcript. Uh, if you come in after I take the roll, it's tardy. If you miss half of a class period, you're supposed to be counted absent. Um, three tardies would be an absence. Now with cell phones and such things like that, um, the main thing would be that when we're having a class period discussing things, try to control yourself and let it stay in your pocket or out, you know, where you're not going to be playing with it. You don't want to miss anything in here. If you miss it, you're cheating yourself. And um, then it's a, distract, a distraction to somebody else. This stuff, this information is worth a lot and you need all of it. Um, so keep your phones on vibrate. If you, if you get an emergency call, just throw your hand up, step out and take care of it. Um, now as far as cheating goes, um, don't cheat, don't cheat yourself. Don't, you know, don't, you know, just don't do it. Try to learn the material yourself. Get it for yourself so you can demonstrate it. Because look, if you cheat in here and you get on a job somewhere and you can't really back up what your paper says, you, you, you have a degree that, that, or, or a certificate. It might get, get you in. It ain't going to keep you in nowhere. can't keep you in. What's going to keep you in is you demonstrate that you can back up what that paper says at least that much. So don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. Um, absorb it, get it, learn it, and then when you get out, you should be able to hold your own and do well. If someone is caught cheating, then I'll, you know, you get a zero for the assignment and then I actually have to do a report. I have to report it to the services that someone has cheated. So it's been seen. So, so it will go on your record. Um, I can do a withdrawal on someone up to the 70% day if it's after that point and there's some unusual circumstance, I would be a, it would be a WP, you know, a WP. And then um, I can do an incomplete, like for medical cases, um, Eric had a, a surgery had to be done last semester. He had to get out and we had to do an incomplete. Now he's gonna finish it this, this semester from the residential. All he needs is one more worksheet and exam. But he got pulled out on, on a real serious back surgery that he had to go do. So we can do something called an incomplete if you had an emergency and had to get out at the last minute. And then you pick up right from when you left off to finish it up and, there, and it's you'd like you didn't, you didn't miss a stroke on, you know, so. It's a WF if you withdraw and you're failing after that 70%. Um, safety as far as, um, you know, dangerous things. I've only had one person in one situation where somebody threatened somebody in the parking lot, they were, you know, were going, and the, the guy that got threatened told me about it, and I told the campus police, and he he put that fire out to me. So, so if you if you hear of any threats like that, whether it's you or somebody else, let me know, and I'll get the police involved in it. We'll we'll put that out, you know. If drinks and stuff, just make sure that you got it. It's in spill proof, you know. And don't have them. Don't have them directly up there where the computers are. Those computers are going to be replaced. But don't have them around the computers when we get the new ones. And don't have them directly on your control board area where something can spill into your some of your controls. Just make sure you've got them kind of, you know, where it can't get in any any of your uh, stuff. Snacks are fine. Eating is fine as long as you clean up. Just don't. I'm not a maid, and I'm nobody's mom or daddy. You know, just to clean up. So just make sure you pick up by yourself. You know. And you'll be fine. The grading scale is, is a 10 point scale, like normal. Yeah. 
and the weights of your material is like this. Your tests are 40% of the grade. Worksheets are 20%. Your hands-on labs are 30%. And then safety, participation, and quizzes would be 10%. And that stuff is continuously uh, calculated in Moodle. So you can go, when you, when you get in Moodle for this class, and scroll all the way over to the end of it on the right. You get your end average is always in there, always. So every time a grade goes in, you can scroll all the way to the right, and you've got your final average on that course. It, you know, always. That's the table of contents, and um, there's a lot. There's a whole lot to it, and I, and I won't have to read all this out loud. We're just going to get started on it. Um, if you, this is really important right here. I would take a picture of this with your phone because, you know, there's times all, all through the year that where, that where the school system, our, uh, our online web page sometimes is not accessible, can't get to it directly through, through, the, through the campus system. If, if you have a time like that, weather and different things going on, that's your, that's your direct links from outside. So to get to Moodle, you go directly to that link right there and it'll take you straight to Moodle without going through our system to get to Moodle. Moodle is actually off campus anyway. It's hosted by somebody else. None of that stuff is hosted on campus. So that's your direct link when, when you say, I can't get in, you go there and it'll get you in. If the problem is on campus with our server, you get you, you, then you go straight to, to the provider with those links. The second one, office.com, that's how you get to your email directly and bypassing the campus. It'll take you straight to your email. And, uh, so those two, make sure you know how to get to them, a, a snapshot, and um, you know, and then you'll be good to go. Uh, it, I haven't seen a time yet that you, that you couldn't get in that way. It's without fail, it's, it's worked every time uh, for me and everybody else. So that's our syllabus, and any questions? Okay, if, if not, yeah. Yes. Um, so like, uh, on the grades, you said is it 10 points good? So like, what's, what's passing? I see. Yeah. 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 And actually, I got paper copies here of the, of the, of the syllabus I was going to give you. So, what about this class? What you got to have in this class to get my or me to pass? This is easy. You can flip, flip it under your last page. It's probably the next to last page. You'll see it. All right, okay. If you want a paper copy of the syllabus, page, yeah, I'll give you one. It's got all that stuff in there. Yeah, a 60, 60, 60 to a 69 is a D, but it's passing, and I don't know why it's passing. I don't agree with that, but it is. You know, to me, when I first time I saw that, I said, what? You know, a D is passing. It won't when I come along, you know. <laughs> you know. But I tell you, I ain't just trying to get by those, man. If you, if you, if you, you know, if, if all you're trying to do is get by, and you make a 65, hey, you might get through it, but guess what? When that employer asks for a transcript, yeah. they're going to see the details. They're going to see that D. Yeah. They're gonna say, uh -uh. "My D in motor controls." Uh, we'll call you we'll somewhere down the road. We'll keep you on file. You know, they're gonna be polite. You know, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Okay. So the acknowledgement quiz. Look at here, right there. Go ahead and click it. My information on the paper outside. Now, my, mine is showing up different than yours. I do. I have to do a preview to actually read it. There's one question. I have read and understand the course syllabus. You hit true and submit, and then you're done. Go ahead and do that and knock it out. Because, again, if you don't do it, 
after after the ten percent point, it's going to bump you out of the class. Uh, Benjamin and uh, Nathan, are, are y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Can y'all go ahead and knock, knock out that quiz? Take you two seconds to do it. It's better to knock it out than to say I'll do it tomorrow and then have something else going to stop you, you know. I did it. Hmm. I can't guarantee you they, they they won't get on the internet. Well, oh, your charger? Yeah. yeah okay. The, the power strips will work. Yeah. I probably got to make. Uh, I need to cut on this first one so you can get power downstream there. <laughs> If you will, uh, if you cut on this that strip, then the rest of it. Make sure all of them are on. Yeah, yeah, put, yeah, that's what, that's what I can do. These two here. Yeah, we started with Right. And then hopefully he'll have power down that way. They all have to be on because we're all tied together. They got them daisy chained over there. While you're doing that, knocking out that question, I'm going to pull up chapter one and we're going to get started. So for chapter one, for, uh, for uh, you guys that are, that are remote right now, if you look on the screen here, Let's see if I can get. Can y'all see me pointing here? The, the safety chapter is right here. If you click this, you can download the safety chapter right out of the book. I, I, I scanned it. So you can click that and download that and, and read it. There's some handouts. There's three handouts ahead. If you've never taken any electrical classes, you can download those. It'll help you in chapter one. And then in, in, well, in the safety chapter. Safety chapter is not chapter one. There's a safety chapter and then there's chapter one and then it goes on that way. So after after the safety chapter, there's a worksheet that you're going to do and it's due this Thursday. So those are your two links right there to, to get the, the chapter itself and then to do the uh, to do the worksheet. So if we go in and click to view the chapter itself, you just click that, and it's the PDF that pops up like that. And it's directly from the book. I mean, I scanned it in color. Right. So you, you should be set in a very well. Hmm. 
So after your last four, it gets at and then mail dot Samson. If it's his first time logging in, it's not going to disturb what you do. You should be That what it looks like? That pretty yeah. to y'all. That's what it is. So first first initial, last full name, last four social, and then this. No, not social. Student ID. Student ID. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you try to do income tax on me already. I'm sorry. <laughs> you try to do our income taxes already, huh, Derwin? He trying to get somebody in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch me. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch me. <laughs> so right on the back of that badge there is it's directly the last four. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that, that should be easy right there. So the past where you see it's the last name. I'm not sure what time it is. I don't know how it is because I've been in so long. The best way to find out is you can go to the library and then it should have it on the administration. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, when you first come in, they yeah. give you a paper with all the laws and stuff. Yeah. It should be all along that paper. Yeah. If you got it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you absolutely. When you, you signed up for you your courses. Your library, and then yeah. You go to student service. Or not student service. But, uh, look, you can, look, you, go, I'm going to show you something. You can, we can try this right here. If you go out, out to the uh, front, there's a chat box. What would you like to know? We can just try that. What would you like to know? What would you like to know? The question at the bottom. <laughs> I <didn't see> uh, <laughs> <either>. <laughs> okay. Um, how do I? Can you, can you, how, how do you? How do I spell? Password. So it's just telling you go to student services. <laughs> But there's, I, I, I've actually seen it documented. Um, are you in yet? No, sir. You're not in yet. There should be a, there should be an email that would that would tell me that. Um,
Word will be will be this. I, I knew I had somewhere. You put B D. Yeah, there you go. This this is if you've never gone in. It's your first time going into your change. It'd be this. So. B D. Month, day, year. Month, day, year. Going to be so in January it'd be Okay. I'm shooting that to you, the email now. Okay. So that, that email had all that in there, it, it's going to you. Okay, so back, back to our chapter, uh, to our safety chapter. Because the class only goes to like 155. We're going to just keep rolling here. I've got a, I've got a paper copy. Uh, who, who doesn't have the book? I'm going to give you a paper copy of this on your safety cap. I got the book. I got 
it, it, in, in my opinion, it, it's the best book you can get. Uh, it's the best uh, electrical book I've ever seen. When you get into it, there's a lot of a lot of really good stuff in there. I will never sell the book. Never. The butterball plant, they send people out here from time to time. And what they're starving for is, is what this is this class right here is what they what they all of them want without a doubt. Number one, this is what most of them want, that there's only a few guys over there that know it. But uh okay, so with, with every electrical course you, you gotta have a safety safety intro. How many of you have never taken any electrical classes whatsoever? Zero, raise your hand. Okay. Two. So we always have someone that hasn't had any electrical, so this is, you know, for you and a refresher for, for the rest of you. So safety is, is your job, not only, not only looking out for you, but looking out for other people. So it's just like driving on the highway. The safety is the same thing, whether you're driving or whether you're working on playing a maintenance group. Look out for you, look out for the people. Yeah. You have a broad scope uh, for safety. General safety rules. Never work on an energized circuit if the power can be disconnected. And there's a lot to be said about that. Let's say that you got you got a machine that's um, You get called to a machine and the operator says it's not it's not working right. It's it, it, it was and now it's not. So you go up to it and there's some cases you'll go up to it and you can put your finger right on what's wrong just cause you know you, you, you know you get out of the machine. Other cases it's gonna require using a meter. Now when you use a meter, there's a lot of cases to where you've actually got to leave that power on and use a meter to ever really get to the there's a lot of cases that way. When it gets down to something that's not so obvious, the meter has to be brought out in the schematic, and then you know, and you got to leave it. In, mo in, in a lot of cases, you got to leave the power on to use the meter to troubleshoot it. And then we get out our electrical gloves and the PPE. So we have. And I'm trying to do this in front of the camera for everybody that's out there remotely. So if you're if you're in one of those cases, which is really more times than not, where you're going to have that power is going to be on for you to really get to the root of it um, to ever find it. So you have electrical gloves here. These are voltage rated, and you have the rubber the rubber that goes under the leather. The rubber part is really what's voltage rated. It's rated for a thousand volts. I send them off every so often and have them checked in Goldsboro at a lab where they, they test them for pinholes and stuff and for cracks. They check them. The leather is to keep you from tearing the rubber part that's under there. So the leather part is, is only a protector for the, for the rubber itself. These here, make sure that you don't lay them anywhere where there's metal chips or oil. Don't let these get contaminated on anything the engine lays or the, or the milling machines out there. Don't just flop them around. Don't use them to, to, to do mechanical work because these gloves are about 120 bucks for a pair of these. If you get grease and get metal chips in there, they're no good. They're contaminated. You get one pinhole, you got to throw them away. They're no good because you could get killed off of it. I've heard of cases to worst people with a power company, somebody get electrocuted and dead because of a pinhole in a glove. You know, so. Again, protect these and your again, wherever you lay them down when you're done with them. Remember, these are, you know, your life depends on these things being having integrity to them. So you want to put them somewhere dry and not nowhere oily or, or metal chips. Um, you have a, a art rated uh, face shield. This is not for grinding. So the grinding, the grinding helmets are for the welding shop, you know. They're rated a certain way. These are much more expensive and they have a filter that filters out super bright lights whenever you have an arc flash, it's super bright like light lightning, you know. And these have a filter that filters out the bright 
race so that you hopefully don't get blinded if, if you if you get exposed to an arc flash. So you have these. We use these, and then we have arc rated clothing that's fire resistant, fire resistant clothing. And here we provide the the uh, the lab coats, and they're these are made by Bulwark, the company Bulwark. And so this material here is special. I have to take it to the cleaners over there and I gotta tell them, I give them a sheet of what they can use to dry clean this with of what they can't use. So the company tell, it has got a sheet that you gotta tell the cleaner, you gotta use one of these chemicals here and you can't use these other chemicals. Like you can't wash it at home, you can't use a fabric softener or it'll actually remove the chemical property that keeps it from burning. So this is supposed to not catch on fire if you get an arc flash. Um, and so you're going to use these every every for every lab once on. Um, you'll wire it up without all this on. But when we go to un, un, unlock it, we're going to have lockout tag out on there. When we go to unlock it, you put this stuff here on, and then we unlock it, and, and we put power on your circuit. So, and then when we finish testing it, then we 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 lock it out, and then you take this off. So you do it in that order. Make sure that you don't take this off first, and then and then put the lock on. You know, you put the lock back on and then take this off. So, that you can... good. Good. So, what was it that? Uh, no, I had changed. I had changed. Yeah, it came to my mind when you were talking. Good, good. Jot, jot down, put it in your bill for where your money is, and you won't lose. <laughs> <laughs> If any of you want to see that these items here, you can, you can take a look down. I'll still here in the middle. Again, they are voltage rated. One thing that we do that is it's recommended. It's, it's recommended that each, each time that you pick these up, and it's your responsibility to remember to do that. You take these and you pull the rubber part out like that. You want to inspect the leather part for any, any cracks, any contamination of metal chips of oil. You take these, inspect them for holes, any, any type of foreign particles on there, pinholes. Take them like this, get them open, pinch the cuff like that, roll it up real tight and get some air trapped in there like a balloon. Get the air trapped. Hold it nice and tight, squeeze and listen. Listen for leaks. If you hear a leak, get it back, do it again, double check it. If it still leaks, then you've got a pinhole, they're, 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 no, they're no good. So that's the way you can check them. You can check them, say, from here down. Now, up in here, you can't check them until they're sent to a lab. They've they got a, a special machine that checks them all the way to the cuff up here. So that's what they do in Goldsboro when I send them over there. So that's, that's something to, to remember to do that, look, the little balloon test. You can pass these around if you want to take a look at them. And there's a three-step check that OSHA recommends for, for your multimeter. So when you go to use a, a meter to check to see if to make sure a circuit that it, 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 it is dead, there's a three-step process that you go through. And what they suggest is this. You test this meter on a, on a non live circuit to make sure that it's operating. Now simply go over, you can go over to one of the receptacles in any room that you know is hot and take your probes, you put it on voltage and you, and you check for, for power on something that you know is hot, that's just this, this nearby. That tells you the meter does, it will recognize power. Then you check the circuit that you're getting ready to work on, the one that's going to be de energized. You go to it and you test it. But you want to test it once it's locked out. Now that part there is coming up in this chapter about lockout timeout. So let's, let's look at that real quick. There's a there's a variety of them. There's a lockout there's a lockout device for pretty much anything you can think of. So here we have a, you got a motor control, something called a motor control bucket. 
in. This is one that it, it goes into a wall structure in, in a plant that where there might be a lot of these in a wall structure. And this one here, if this motor control happens to be on and you go up to it to work on the motor, say you're going to replace a motor and it's, and it's connected to the output of this, of this box here. You're going to go up to it, go up to the side of it, don't go in front of it, put your gloves on, go to the side of it to shut it off. Don't be in front of it. If you're in front of it, there's a risk on arc flash in your face whenever you, whenever you disconnect it. So go to the side of it like this here and look. Go to the side of it, look away, and cut it off looking in the other direction. If there's an arc flash, it wouldn't get you in the face. It would, it would blast out that way and not get you. Yeah, so that's your first step. Lockout, tag out. There's different styles of them. This here is a multi hasp lockout that's commonly used in uh, motor controls. So it's, it, it works like this, like scissors, and it's got six holes in there. So I go make sure this all the way off. I put it around like that. I put my lock on there. I have my name on that tag, and I'm the only one that's got the key. Nobody else is allowed to have that key. Unless your policy says that your supervisor has to have a duplicate key, if they say that, then, then that may be the case. But nobody else, nobody but maybe the guy over you could have a key in some places don't even allow that. So these other holes on here, now the CD, you can't cut it off, right? So the other holes in there are for other folks to go put their locks on if there's more than one guy working on the same machine. Let's say, for instance, you're going to replace the motor on the machine, and there's another guy that's going to replace a valve, a leaking valve. So the same power source, but you, you know you're doing the electrical. This other guy's doing something hydraulic. So he goes in there and he puts another lock in this other hole here. If he finishes putting the motor in and getting it wired and he's ready, he'll go ahead and take his lock off, and he'll tell the other guy, "Hey, I'm done. When you get done, you know we're fired up. We're going to run it and check everything." So the hydraulic guy, when he finishes his, he takes his off and then they, they, they cut it on and they check everything at the same time. So um, that's what the holes, you, you can do up to six. Um, I know for a fact there was a case at Butterball a couple of years ago to where there was three guys that got fired at the same time because they did not lock the machine out. There was three guys working on the machine over in Mount Olive. They were all three of them, they told me the names and every one of them were sharp smart guys that have been over here and taking classes and, 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 and did really good at everything. It wasn't that they didn't know what to do and it wasn't that they were not good. They were excellent uh, maintenance technicians, but they failed to lock the machine out. Three guys in there in the machine and nobody had a lock on. So what they did is the supervisor saw it and he escorted all three of them out the door immediately and they were all terminated. So this is how serious the stuff is. Don't be in such a rush that you that you overlook this. If you do, you can get broken limbs or, or get killed. Okay, seriously. Huh? Or get somebody else hurt. Or get somebody else hurt, exactly. So it, it will lead to broken bones or death or somebody, you know, it, or damage your property. It can very easily. So once you get it locked out like that, then go through this process here of your second step. It says test the circuit that's going to be become the de-energized circuit with the meter. So then your first step was to take the meter and I go check a receptacle, something I know is hot. And it shows me the 120 volt. Then I come back over here and I check and I make sure that this circuit is dead. Okay. Then what's the third step? Go back and check the hot circuit again. And that sounds redundant, but it's not. What it proves is, is it proves that the meter will say it'll give you a hot reading, it'll give you a dead reading, and it'll give you a hot reading again. And that third step is what OSHA, they recommend that to make sure that, that you're safe. The meter didn't flake out in the second step, it, the meter's still good. There's a one in a million chance that that could happen. That meter would have went bad at that point but they, they want to eliminate that one out of a million chance by checking it again. And then there's no doubt about it whatsoever. 
there's no stored energy in there. Their motor control, some of these have actually capacitors that store energy for three to four or five minutes after you cut one off. We got the variable variable frequency drives out here in, in the cabinets that they store energy that long and it, and it takes them, you know, three to five minutes to actually bleed down that stored energy. So those are ones that where you gotta wait that amount of time and then check it and make sure that it's bled all the way down. So that's your three-step check. Now, what we're going over now is actually in your worksheet that you, that you need to do once we cover this chapter. Um, everybody's going to get very familiar with how to use a meter. You know, you'll learn how to read, read symbols and then wire circuits. We power them up and then we go through basics on how to use the meter to, to measure things. And then within a couple of weeks, I'll, I'll be putting bugs in, in your circuits and you'll be troubleshooting problems. You know, it won't be long at all. You'll actually have some bugs I'll plan in there. I'll have problems. I'll end. You have a lab that worked fine, did it tested fine, and then I'll tell you, okay, uh, now I'm going to put a bug in that board for your next class period. Now, you, you go work on a worksheet now, and I make a note, and then when you ain't around, I go put a surprise in the board. Next class period, you come in, you got a problem, you're going to troubleshoot. You know, so that's, there's a lot of that that I'll be doing in here, and you'll get, you'll, You'll learn a lot about how, how do you use the meter, how do you reason out where to go to check things. So it's, you, you will learn a lot. Um, there's a, there's a, six, a six, uh, six step set of rules for lockout tag out that I've got it in Moodle. So when you go into once you do once you do the safety worksheet, there's a lockout tag out PowerPoint. We're going to go over that too in class. That PowerPoint you can download. There's the worksheet. Now within there you're going to see a set of rules that you got to go by when it when it comes time to use a lockout. Which includes letting letting people know that are that are associated with the machine, you're getting ready to lock it out. And then there's safety steps on making sure that once you lock it out, that the energy is gone, that it's dissipated or, or bled or whatever. And then you get on down to the end of it, you're gonna let everybody know associated with this machine, you're getting ready to unlock it and and power it back up. So there's all of those steps are involved in there. It's not a matter of it, if you just uh, of it just being you that knows what's going on. But your machine operator needs to know it, your supervisor needs to know it, production planner, whoever, it, they all need to be in the know before you do it, when you're working on it, and when you're done and you're getting ready to release it. Everybody needs to be in the know about that stuff. And uh, to to keep in policy, keep safe, and uh, keep everybody in the know about what's going on. Um, if you want to pass that around, take a look at it. That's just one style. They got actually, uh, they got locked out to the lockout individual breakers and everything. We'll get that in just a minute. Now it says here to install a warning tag at the point of disconnection so people won't restore power to the circuit. If possible, use a lock. So in some cases, in some cases, you might not put a lock on there. You might not be able to put a lock on there. Um, so just an example. Um, say for instance, that you've got a uh, you've got a valve, a water valve to a machine, and and you need to cut the water off to to fix a leak on the machine. And maybe that company does have a lockout for that valve. Now they make them. Here's one for a valve. So you take that right there. That's called a slip blind. That fits over a valve handle, and then you put a lock on it, and then nobody can actually cut the valve back on. Well, let's say if nobody, if they don't have these, and then they make them, they make them in, in different sizes. That's for a small water valve there. So it goes over the stem, you know, like that, and then you lock and you put a tag on there. What if you don't have these? You cut the valve off and you just put a tag on there.
Operate. And, and that's, if that's the best you can do, then, then that's the best you can do. Uh, so, but make sure that you do have uh, access to these tags and that you use them. So the company should be providing those. And even if, let's say, if, if they don't, make you a tag. Put a tag on there, strap it, tape it, something. Do something to, to tell somebody, don't cut the water back on, I'm working on it. Maybe the valve was here, maybe the valve was outside the hog house, okay? And then you're in, the, you're in the hog house working on a two-inch water line, right? <laughs> Put, do something to tell somebody don't don't mess with it, you know. So uh, that's, that's the idea. You know, and, uh, a lot of stuff that we do, we do it for ocean directly. Yeah. And we're, each of us maintenance guys have a certain color. Certain color? Tag. Okay. Like Justin will have one color, I will have a different color. That way we all know who's doing from a distance. Feel that tag from him. Okay. It's assigned to him. That's good. I like that. I never, I never heard of that. That's good. You, you can tell from a distance if it's a blue tag, you know, who's got it locked down. You don't even have to go say, well, who's got it? Or you don't have to go look at a name. You got a color. Okay. But if you got, say, you know, a couple of hundred maintenance guys like Boulder Ball's got, that won't work now. <laughs> but if you got a small plant, you, you know, you can do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, says here, of all the rules concerning safety, this is probably the most important one. No amount of safeguarding or idiot proofing a piece of equipment can protect the person as well as, as well as what? What's the most important rule it says? Taking time to do what? Think before acting, yeah. Think before acting. There's a consequence to all of our actions in maintenance, just like in life. There's a consequence to where you turn on that road or you do whatever you do, there's a consequence. And when you're around the industrial machinery, the consequences can be major. They can be major. So take time to think. Don't let somebody harass you. You got a production man says, man, you got to figure out how much longer, and they're, they're rattling off like that. And they let them rattle. So you try to control yourself enough to where you're thinking safety, go ahead and move on with it, but do it safely, but don't get so fast to where you're not thinking. Don't let them get rattled used to the word point to where you're skipping safety things. And then, cause what can happen is if you skip safety, they'll end up throwing it back at you. You, you just look out somebody, they can end up throwing it back. Well, you know, well you should have this and you should have that, you know, you know what I mean? That's kind of the way stuff can go really. So you better cover your bases. And don't let nobody push you beyond doing what the company policy says. Because um, they do get not thinking correctly when they're talking about production pressure and all. They got to load trucks and stuff. Um, anyway, there people, many people have been killed by supposedly dead circuits. It says don't depend on circuit breakers, fuses, or someone else to open a circuit. Test it for yourself before you touch it which means do the three-step check with, with your meter yourself. Don't go by somebody else's word. Don't go by the fact that that switch is down and locked out. You want to go and make sure that where, for instance, on this, on this circuit right here, when I cut it off, it's not dead in here. It's, this is plugged into a wall structure. This is going to be hot in here. Where it'll be dead will be on the bottom side of the circuit breaker, right? When I cut this off, it's still hot coming in, but it's going to be dead at the bottom of the breaker. So you would be checking at the bottom of the breaker here that feeds into the uh, motor starter. Your point of checking would be here. And you would need to check it for yourself to make sure that it is dead. You know what I'm saying? Check it for yourself. Not that you would cut somebody. So you really don't know how big a hurry they could have been in and make an assumption. I went behind somebody one time and almost got killed one time. They had to switch off. And this guy got his hands in there in, in, in a machine to replace something in a panel. And uh, there was a loud kaboom that came out of there. It, it scared the crap out of me. Well, I went over there and I said, uh, did you check the power before you went in there? He says, 
well, you see that the switch is off. I said, I do see that, but did you use a meter to check downstream of the breaker, leaving the breaker going to where you were? He said, no. He says, you see the switch is off. I said, that doesn't matter. The breaker could be bad. The breaker could be shorted on the inside, welded shut. Breaker contacts, whenever they make and break, after so many times, sometimes whenever they make that they weld their self, and even though you cut the switch off, you might have one of the legs in there out of those three hot legs, one of them that stays stuck or welded. And that's what happened. Out of, a, out of the three hot legs, the three-phase power on that in that panel, when he cut it off, one of those legs had welded shut in that, in that breaker, and it was still hot, and he happened to get a hold of it. You know, he, he lived to, to tell about it. He looked like he, he was, man, he was, he looked like he seemed to go, you know, he was pretty uh, shook up. So check it yourself with the meter. Um, if you're working on high voltage equipment, use insulated gloves and meter probes to make, to measure the voltage being tested. Make sure that the meter's rated for what you're, the voltage that you're working with. Um, you're going to use gloves, period, here, unless it's below 50 volts. If it's below 50 volts by OSHA, you don't have to have them. That's your determining point. If you're, say, 50 volts and up, you got to have them on. I recommend using them anyway. I recommend using them anyway. So, um, it's actually time to stop. You go ahead and read the rest of this. Horseplay and all. Horseplay can be... Force play can be a problem. It can lead to someone getting hurt. Uh, there's time and place for that. When you're on break and you're away from the machine, go ahead and horse play, whatever. You know, be, be, be who you are, you know. Turn it loose, you know, but don't do it when somebody's working on something. Uh, it says, don't work alone unless you have to. Um, I got a friend at Butterball that died like two years ago, Robert, Robert McCullen, that died. He was by himself working on some lights. He was he was above the ceiling working on some lights in an area between the ceiling and the real roof and where they had access to walk up in there, something called interstitial at Butterball. And he, he was working on some lights and the lights were still on. They were hot. They didn't cut the circuit off. He was actually working on it hot. And it was really hot up in there. And... I didn't see what, he, I don't know what he had on, what he didn't have on, all, all I know is, I don't think he had all of his stuff on probably. And when he opened up a, a, a fixture, what happened was a, a loose wire came out and it hit him in the neck and it killed him. And he had come over here and he had taken all the way through level three motor controls of me and he had mastered everything he took. The guy noticed stuff, he was good, really good, great guy. And something, that little something went wrong. And I don't know what, again, I don't know what he had on, what he didn't have on. I don't know, but somehow his neck, it, see, it hit his neck. He was working by himself. <laughs> Up to that point, they allowed guys to work on stuff by themselves at that plant. But guess what happened? Soon, when he died, never again did they let anybody work by themselves on anything electrical. Never. They, you have to work in twos. I leave it at that. This is not scary. It's just to realize, um, I, you can be very successful with this and do really good, but try hard to have somebody with you when you're working if, if it's possible. I even do it at home now. The, the, the other night I had a my light fixture in the living room. It, it was just cutting in and out. I had a, one bulb in the middle that was flaking out and the rest of them won't. And I, and I said, I'm, I'm gonna drop it and see if there's a loose wire in there. So I called a couple of friends of mine over and said, how about coming over while I do this and watch me? I, you know, I just had back surgery, man. I, you ain't gonna catch me working on stuff by myself like that. Unless it's an emergency, I ain't going to no more. And they watched me and I went in and checked everything and you know, I found what I think was wrong. And uh, so anyway, it's just plan it out. I'm gonna stop right here. You go ahead and read the rest of it. CPR or something that's, um, they required us here at school to, to learn that we, we have to get certified that as instructors. So anyway, look here. Check, look out where your worksheet is in, in Moodle. Once you read through this chapter, you go in and you click here. This is your worksheet. I'm just going to give you a preview of it. You click it. You go through. It's multiple choice. Okay. There's only five questions in that one. There's just five questions in that one. When you get to 
when you get to the lockout tag out one that's there's a there's a, a pdf that you can uh, open up and look at it we're going to go over to powerpoint in class but it's got in there information about lockout tag out you get into the details here about different energy sources you, you can lock out you know like you know valves and things like that there goes your valves there so you know, I showed you the slip lines you can do valves with, so that it includes a lot of things. And it gets in all your details and all. Uh, so when you get, there's a, a worksheet for lockout tag out. It's all, it's all multiple choice except the last one. The last one is actually a matching now here, I'll tell you up front on this one. These are your these are your steps of doing lockout tag out, and you're going to take the numbers, you're going to drag and drop them in the box to put the right number in the right thing. So when you when you do this, there's seven items over here. What you got to do is you're going to take your left mouse button here and hold down whatever number it is, and while you hold it down with the left mouse button. Use your down arrow on the keyboard to move the screen down so you can see the other choices on the left. And then you'll hover the mouse over and drop it in the right box. But you've got to use the you got to use the down arrow on the keyboard to get down far enough to be able to drop drop it in a box. Oh, okay. You can do that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a good idea. But that's the only, that's the first time I've ever designed one like this. I wanted to do the I come up with that over the weekend, and uh, and it, it it it'll work fine. It's it's first one I've done that way. But uh, anyway, that's one that you know you got to Thursday to do these two. So it's, it's wonder if you get to it. I'll see you tomorrow in here same time. We're, this is a four day class, and uh, they got it shortened up, but it's four days. So uh, th thank you for coming, and I uh, will again. We'll get you we'll get your hands on some stuff this week. It's probably takes say Wednesday before we actually get you to do anything with your hands, um, because we got to cover enough to, for you to know kind of what to do. So, yeah. Yes, sir. Have a good one, and thank you for joining. Have a good. One. Um, like your semester from last semester, I'm gonna say your class from last semester mm -hmm. is not back on here. Oh, you're not, not, you're not seeing it. Here. Nope. It's just this semester classes. All right. So let me send an email to Marion right now. Tell her to tell her to, to put it back in yours because she told me she that you would be able to get it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Let I me, got the email from her. I think I got the email from her. What's, what's she that last semester saying they gave me the incomplete? I showed it. It shows up on my what's name. It's not showing up on this course this year. This semester. Thank you. What was your name again? Daniel. Daniel. Daniel Moore, Dr. Clay. I'll get you that name down. Pay attention. Pay attention. Yeah, because that was what? ELC 119, wasn't it? 113. 113. Yeah. And then uh, and drafting was the 119 with Miss Carla. She hasn't got back up with me on that yet. And I already talked to uh, Miss uh, Holmes on math. She's got. She's trying to get that pulled back up for me too. One forty six. This is say oh one forty six. If it does, it'll be in here. Mm -hmm. This is it. This is this is this is. 146 is the shop and the C is in here, classroom. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Breaking their weight out there. Uh, if you can't do it right now, don't worry about well, it. Well, it won't take but a second. Okay. It won't take but a second. <clears throat> so is that what I need to talk about all the classes in? Mm -hmm. Do I need to get up with her? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mary and Pope. Okay. I'll get up with her about the other ones too. That might be the number that uh, Ms. Holmes gave me too to call about my uh, math class.
and she'll she'll do it. You know your student ID? Yeah. Actually, put it in there. We could have done once they were drafting 119. Yeah. Isn't that the one she talked last semester? That, that sounds right. And then Miss Holmes working on the other one now. Which I ain't got, but I think one drawing left to do for her in the exam. I think it was the same thing like your class. Mm -hmm. I'm already logged in. Where's my? <laughs> where's my? Uh, I want to get back to my Outlook. They never put classes back in from last semester. It looks like they were supposed to. Just the finish on one, two days. <laughs> yeah, they cut me from here to here. And uh, I asked my wife, well, I wasn't approaching I said, it's too good. They hospitalized me for a week after that. They had to get me to start walking again and everything. But uh, she said it was a four and a half hour surgery. And my uncle, he worked uh, at Okay. Hey, hey. Kelly. Mm -hmm. And one day he got hurt on drugs. And after that, he had, he's got. Uh, Plates, rods, screws. I'll be running out of your way. He'll from the top of his back all the way down to the bottom. Sure I'm not going to be there by the time it gets all the way down. All right. Hey, hey. I appreciate it. Right. Hey, how you doing? I'm here now. I'll let you know. Okay. You, you still with uh, Shimmer? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. They ain't going to let a good band go nowhere. <laughs> Hey, they're, they're doing me good right now. Sorry. Yeah, we got some new HR in there. And uh, the last HR didn't want to, because I was a student, they said you have to get 40 hours. He said, two guys came in there, he said, uh, send your employee down here for a while. He said, the make sure you get some time this week. He said, don't ever do it. If I don't get 40, he said, it's not a big deal. 